It's 9 a.m. You wake up from a notification on your phone. Okay, just a quick reply. And then suddenly you've scrolled every single social media app on your phone. And it's 3 p.m. and you haven't left your bed. So you attempt to start the day even though it's already 3 p.m. in the afternoon. There's a list of things you need to do today, but you're stuck on your phone. And then suddenly it's 9 p.m. and you've barely moved since the afternoon. What the fuck? So you attempt to have dinner. And yet again, you can barely go 10 seconds without looking at your phone. So you open up Instagram quickly to look at everyone's story. And then suddenly it's 3 a.m. and you hate yourself in your life because you've compared it to everyone's picture-perfect life on social media. So you pass out feeling depressed and then you wake up to another notification just to quickly reply to and the cycle continues. Don't, don't, don't. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I make commentary, lifestyle, and creative videos. Now I know today's video is not that groundbreaking to everyone, but I really wanted to discuss and spread awareness about these issues that I'll be discussing today. But before we get into the topic, I wanna thank Filmora for sponsoring today's video. So I get a lot of questions from you guys asking, how do you start a YouTube channel? Where do you start? How do you edit videos? What program do I use? Why is it so complicated to use this program? Why is it so expensive? I can't afford it. And I feel for you guys, which is why I highly recommend Filmora, which is hands down one of the easiest easiest editing programs out there that provides so many built-in features that a lot of these overpriced programs offer too. Some of my favorite effects that I love to use is keyframing where you basically get to decide and control where an object goes in every single frame, which I personally use a lot in my video editing. The motion tracking, pretty freaking awesome because you can basically make any object follow anything. There are so many cool, trendy, fun effects for you to try with Filmora. What I love about Filmora is that it is so easy to use. You can focus on making more entertaining and appealing videos. So whether it's for professional or personal use, Filmora is a perfect video editing app for you to try out for free in the link in the description down below. If you really want to stay connected, there is a new service and supposedly it is the next big thing. The latest cyber drug of choice is called Twitter. Sign up if you've never used this before. This is your timeline. This takes you to what's popular and trending. You can add different effects to it. Share it with Twitter, Facebook, Foursquare, and Tumblr. Social media has rapidly grown over the decade and shows no signs of slowing down. What started as an innocent platform to help us connect with one another has turned into a platform designed and programmed to get us hooked. Engagement with social media and our cell phones releases a chemical called dopamine. Dopamine is the exact same chemical that makes us feel good when we smoke, when we drink, and when we gamble. In other words, highly addictive. Social media today strategically rewards us with instant gratification such as likes, comments, notifications, rewarding us with the addictive dopamine. Some apps even replicate the process of pulling a slot machine lever with the pull to refresh feature. That's a conscious design choice. Those apps are usually capable of continuously updating content, but the pull action provides an addicting illusion of control over that process. Nowadays, it's pretty hard to draw the line between what's real and what's not. Like, literally, there are computer-generated influencers. I made a brand new song just for my McAllian. We've got to remember that social media generally is a highlight reel of everyone's lives, a polished version of our reality. Conveniently, with social media creating a whole new persona and portraying a virtually perfect but fabricated life on social media to get others to like and validate us has never been easier. Social media has normalized narcissism and superficiality. We've become so self-centered and focused on making our lives post-worthy to show off our lives and in return we lose quality time with others and ourselves. We're simply no longer truly living in the moment. One of the biggest issues when we start craving these rewards of compliments and likes and comments is that it distorts our values. Be an influencer. How to become a fashion influencer. An Social influencer. media influencer. Social media influencers. They're known as Instakids. The best thing about being an influencer is you get to do really, really cool things. More and more people of all ages want to become online famous, also known as influencers. It's so evident nowadays that you can get pretty much famous for... <laughs> I, I have to laugh. I'm sorry. This is so f ridiculous. I can't stand here. I can't sit here and hear this. If you're going to be in this house, we want like hard workers, people that are actually like caring about their content. What all do you want from me? We've seen it happen too often on social media where influencers or those who aspire to be one go to extremes just to stay popular or to be in the algorithm's favor. And it's quite disturbing how common it is for underage children to be exploited by parents and social media platforms all for some cash reward. 
One of the trendiest cultures on social media nowadays is flexing, which is basically showing off your wealth even if you don't actually have it. A lawsuit was filed by his landlord, but he was sued by DPN Cars Corp for missing a $6,620 monthly payment on the luxury vehicle. <coughs> It's not uncommon for a lot of these influencers to buy a product for an Instagram shot and return it after because they can't actually afford it. These younger children who are easily influenced and vulnerable are becoming more materialistic and aspire to be like their role models. Really expensive, like my first reaction was I, I want that. Why do you like Gucci so much, though? Because it's fancy! Yeah. Yes, the response to loud noise. Although becoming internet famous has never been easier, there are its cons, which includes hypercritics and a toxic trend of cancel culture. Jimmy Fallon is over party. I did blackface as Nicki Minaj in 2011. There are no excuses for it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We are very sorry. I am sorry for that. I'm so sorry. I will be sorry for until the day I die. Cancel culture, simply put, is slamming a person commonly famous for some questionable actions or allegations. A lot of these people behind screens are hypercritical and expecting everyone to be perfect at all times and never make mistakes. Some users go as far as to doxing these public figures and sending death threats to their family and friends. The most toxic thing about jumping on the hate train to cancel someone is that most of these users don't even fact check or wait to hear the other side of the story. Tweets, Instagram, Facebook, blue ticked accounts, especially ones with disabled comments, are not credible sources of information. Following the trend and mainstream narratives has led to less social media users forming their own opinions and completely blocking out opposing opinions or factors that don't fit into their narrative. It's so important to listen to other opinions to hear where they're coming from and cross-referencing multiple sources to find the truth instead of relying on some clickbait headline intended to spark outrage. Nowadays, it's quite common to glorify and romanticize conditions and issues like mental health and eating disorders. It's gotten to the point where certain people, especially the younger ones on social media, feel pressured to have a condition or an issue in order to feel included. Depression? I got it. Anxiety? I got it. Heartbreak? I got it. Therapy? I got it. When we struggle against that pain, when we tell ourselves that we shouldn't be feeling this way and we should just be happy, we're not only upset about the pain that we're going through, but then now we can also feel like ashamed for feeling that pain in the first place. And that could lead to a lot of depression and anxiety in the long run. Toxic positivity, in other words, good vibes only, promotes and pressures excessive happiness and a positive outlook on pain, ironically resulting in a toxic experience as it represses our other humane emotions and struggles. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. Imagine not doing anything fun or going anywhere for the next eight years, including Saturday and Sunday. That's what I did. Hustle culture has a big overlap with workaholism in general and that idea of toxic productivity. The issue with toxic positivity and hustle culture is the portrayal and message on social media. It's become easier to compare ourselves to these posts of others who are seemingly always positive, happy, and hardworking, which is unrealistic and harmful to our mental health. If I spend too long on social media, I feel a bit depressed when I come back to reality because it's so much that I can't handle it. We've come to the point where our reality becomes bland and uninteresting. Quite a lot of us use social media as a form of escapism where we want to simply escape reality and the emotions we're currently feeling, which is generally negative. FOMO, fear of missing out. I just need to know what's going on and I just feel like I need to answer before like I'm out of the loop kind of thing, so. We ironically disconnect ourselves with real life and become even more isolated. They are coming. 22 minutes ago, 300 likes. 76,000 followers and I want to get to 100 followers. On Musical.ly, I have over a thousand. I feel really happy. You want to be followed by more people. Yeah. 
My highest one right now is 643. 547. Mine's 551. Most of us seek for validation on social media from external factors like followers and likes and comments, swipes and matches. The unrealistic expectations and altered realities on social media make us more self-centered and narcissistic. Yet we've become even more insecure before life on social media because constantly comparing our lives to others has never been easier. It's become so destructive for our self-esteem and our relationship and friendships as we compare ourselves to these unrealistic expectations. Snapchat dysmorphia with young patients wanting surgery so they can look more like they do in filtered selfies. Form of selfie dysmorphia a body image disorder defined as a need to heavily edit one's own digital image and an intense dissatisfaction with one's own appearance after using digital filters. If we get Botox, then it's almost like a Snapchat filter, right? That you're walking around with a Snapchat filter. If it's a selfie, I will do it with a filter. It's to make it look, I guess, more pretty. On the rise, teen lip augmentations, breast lifts, fillers, and liposuctions. That's right, kids as young as 13 are getting them. Yet nowadays, more and more parents are gifting their younger children and even babies these digital devices, generally unsupervised and unmonitored too, exposing them to all this social media toxicity. Research is starting to show that technology has an impact on memory, concentration, mood, so anxiety and depression. It has an impact on sleep, has an impact on overall well-being. The solution is actually pretty easy. We need beautiful influencers who are notorious for cosmetic surgery, photoshopping themselves, creating a false reality on social media, to unironically use a casing that says, social media seriously harms your mental health. It be the same energy, sis. But on a serious note, social media isn't for everyone. It comes down to experimenting with it and whether you can build that healthy relationship or not. Don't let social media and the addiction control you. Learn to use social media in moderation, setting boundaries, monitoring your screen time, gradually decreasing your social media usage. Avoid mindlessly using social media, especially out of boredom or procrastination, or avoiding your conflicting emotions and thoughts. Instead, try to use social media intentionally and mindfully. Having a hobby can help to reduce social media usage too. Keep notifications for important apps or turn them all off completely. Avoid starting and ending your day with social media. Remember that there is a life outside social media. Learn to be truly present with others and yourself. Stop seeking for validation on social media. Personally, the more I practice self-care and remind myself that my worth is not based on my likes, comments, social media persona, the healthier my relationship is with social media. The powerful thing about social media is that you can simply unfollow who you want to unfollow and curate the feed that you want to see. So make social media inspiring for you and reflective on your values and goals in life. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please do comment down below your opinions and what you think about social media and don't forget to share the video to spread awareness about these issues and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these type of videos. That's all for today's video and I'll see you guys next time.